Welcome to Bump, the most candid, open and brutally honest show about motherhood, fatherhood and babies. Brought to you by my expert midwife, Bubble and Cyber Jammies. We're talking about boobs! <laughs> Or lack of boobs. Oh, lack when of she boobs. Had a baby. Oh my god, did yours go? Yours haven't gone. They've deflated. Mine are just like like a little flap. Yeah. The, my my friend before I had Aurelia, she said, Oh, mine are like empty tea bags. And I thought, that's really grim. And mine are like empty tea bags. Same. Now. <laughs> so I'm joined by the lovely Heidi. <laughs> She's come to talk to me about breastfeeding. Yes. Now we had we've got different stories on breastfeeding. Um, I breastfed for six months. Well done. That thanks. That's amazing. Well, I mean, uh, uh, whatever anybody does is amazing. I think we've discussed this, haven't we? We yeah. both think that. And you had a very different story, um, which was quite quite a traumatic story for you really wasn't it yeah um so I was I was always one of them people who said I'll try breastfeeding and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't I did go on like a breastfeeding to a seminar before I had the baby with my husband he was the only did man you? there <laughs> God oh God, love was he? <laughs> I was like yeah I think it's all the couples and we turned up at the hospital he was the only one just him squeezing a balloon and oh bless him <laughs> um, but yeah so so we done that and um as soon as Aurelia was born she latched on and I was like this is brilliant yeah um but one of my breasts started bleeding from the first day like and, your, ni your nipple yeah and so the midwife said to me leave that one and just feed her from the other the other one so after 24 hours of feeding her from one breast that was really raw Oh God, and um, which a lot a lot of women get, um, but basically the baby was feeding, but every time she come off the breast, I'd have to give a formula as well because she was she was hungry. Right. And it got to a stage where I was feeding her for two hours at a time, and at that when they're little, you're feeding them every three hours. Oh gosh, so, if not more. Yeah. yeah. So I was feeding her for two an hour on each breast, and then giving her a bottle. And I was exhausted. I'm not surprised. Um, we called out a breastfeeding consultant to the house because they were bleeding, they were raw. And she said, you're not producing enough milk. Uh, you need to stimulate the milk supply. So she got me to feed, feed her and then express. And when I expressed, I got like a tiny amount. So she said, right, we're going to have to stimulate it. You need to do this regime for the next week of just 40 minutes feeding her on the breast and 40 minutes on the pump. And again, I was, I'd be like going into the kitchen crying with the, the two oh. pumps, you know, it was like this much. And, and was what, pumping pain, painful as well? I didn't mind the pumping as much. No. I mean, it, it got to a stage for me, I dreaded feeding her earlier really, yeah. because it was so painful. I'd be crying as I was feeding her. It's um, sore at the best of times. Yeah, there's not much coming out. I can I can't even imagine. Well, it was it was that you know because you're getting no sleep and you you sat doing it, and then having to give her a bottle after yeah. all that was pretty soul destroying. I'm not surprised. Um, I bet you had a lot of tears, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You're emotional anyway, aren't you? Yes. Um, and then anyway, I I started to feel ill. And I felt like fluey, mm. you know, which I just thought it was because of lack of sleep. Yeah. And we called the breastfeeding specialist out again because it still was I still wasn't getting any more milk. And when she came out, she saw my boob and she she said, "You've got a rash, um, which is mastitis." So obviously, you're not looking at your boobs in the mirror. No. When no. you're a new mum, so I hadn't seen the <laughs> so rash. I think you're looking at yourself in the mirror no. at all, are you? <laughs> no. So she said, "You need to go and get an antibiotics." Tomorrow, this was in the evening, so the next morning I went to the doctors, got antibiotics, and then that afternoon uh, the midwife came out to check on the baby, and by the time she came out I was like literally shaking. shaking like this, but with like two blankets over me on the sofa, and she said, you, you need to go to hospital. Oh my gosh. So I just thought, oh, well, I must have bad mastitis mm. so we went to the hospital did your boobs feel hard oh they were they were, were like, like rocks they were solid. like rocks yeah. yeah um and got got into the hospital and it they must have known as soon as i come in because they said we well, need to take the blanket off even though i was shaking oh. um my husband went for a wee and while he went for a wee they done a blood test and came back in the room and said to me you're you're staying in you've got septicemia 
and I, that was just such a shock because well I mean that's kind of the last thing that you expect to happen isn't it yeah like because you're you're so focused on trying to feed that little person yeah I don't think you really think about yourself and nah. like what because I imagine if you'd have been feeling that way having not just had a child you would have gone to hospital probably straight away as soon as you as soon yeah. as you started shivering and I think because you'd have because you'd have knew more you think, I feel exhausted and I mm. feel unwell, but this must be normal. This, this is be it. What, what it's meant this to feel hood. like. Yeah, brilliant, um, oh joy. So, so, yeah, so I ended up in hospital with sepsis and oh was gosh. on a drip for a week. And you were in hospital for a week? Yeah. Um, so how was that then, having to leave your week? Was she, was she a week old at this point? She was three weeks old, three weeks so old. I breastfed her until that point. Um, but because it was a... Um, because it was, I was ill, they gave me a private room because they didn't, if it was an infection that could spread, right, they didn't want me near the other baby. So she actually got to stay with me and Did my she? husband in the room, which That's was amazing. And also another thing for me was, you know, she was in the room with us in the little, in the little cot. And I just used to think, thank God I'm ill and it's not, not her. her. You know, you think of other families who were in hospital and they're there because their baby's because not well babies. yeah absolutely like you, it puts everything into perspective doesn't it yeah i because i could never understand when my mum used to say to me when i was poorly i wish i could have it all i wish it was me and i, I was laying there thinking i wouldn't wish it was me if it was the other way around no. and then you have a baby and you're like you would take any pain anything. away from yeah. them wouldn't you yeah and so obviously when you're in hospital on the drip and very poorly you couldn't breastfeed at that point. I, I could have carried on, yeah. I was expressing to begin with still when I was yeah. in there. And it was actually it was actually the breastfeeding consultant who we'd hired privately and my husband who gave me the confidence to stop. Because um, actually, at one stage, one of the midwives come in the room and my husband had just come in with a coffee for me and I put the, the pumps down. And she came in and she said, and why aren't you pumping? <gasps> like, and my husband nearly leapt uh, out bet, of the I chair. Because he he'd yeah. seen what I'd gone, what through. gone through. And, and, and him and the breastfeeding consultant said to me, some women just can't do it, you know? Or, or they, can't, they can do it with one child and they can't with another. But by this stage, I've become so obsessed with wanting mm. it to work and yeah. wanting to do it, which surprised me because I was never one of those people beforehand. And I, you know, I got so emotional about, I mean, I was in tears. I, I think I almost, I was on the borderline of getting postnatal depression Re because, because of, that. of that, I think. Um, but Alex was so supportive and he just said, look, we've got a beautiful, healthy baby. She's happy. Mm -hmm. You know, she's had a great birth, you've had a great pregnancy, she's fine on formula. You're doing the best. You're, you're compromising every aspect of her happiness because you're gonna you're you're ill now mm -hmm. and you yeah. need to be well for her. And he was like, just just give it a bloody bottle. Yeah, yeah. Because when you put it into perspective, it would be much better for you to be well and fully functioning as yeah. a human. Yeah and look after her and her be on formula, yeah. then you struggling away, trying to feed, being poorly, and neither of you being happy. Yeah. But there is, did you feel like there was just a lot of pressure from kind of like other people to <laughs> breastfeed, or do you think you'd kind of? Yeah, I think a bit of both. I think there is definitely pressure to, to, to breastfeed. You yeah. know, all the, the antenatal classes you go to, it's all, you know, breast is best. Mm -hmm. and, and it is, if you can do it, you know. And I'm glad that I got to give Aurelia the colostrum, which is the, the, the beginning, the, beginning bit, yeah. the, the, um, the golden milk or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I just think I, I ended up putting the pressure on myself mm. and it, I became obsessed with it. But it was when I stopped, I remember feeling really ashamed and embarrassed. Did you? And, and it makes me quite emotional, but I, oh. if I go to a group, I felt embarrassed getting a bottle of milk out and feeding it because all the other oh, mums... Oh, my God, don't cry, I'll cry. <laughs> all, all the other mums would have, you know, the baby under their top and, and like, oh, and it's, it's squirting out. And, and I just felt like... Did it make you feel I less? failed her. Um, you didn't. Which is ridiculous yeah. because if I saw another mum feeding formula, I would go... So what? You know, as long as the baby's feeding and gaining weight. Yeah, then, and that baby's but, happy. Yeah. If that baby's fed, 
that yeah. baby is a happy baby. But it's your hormones. It's your hormones. It as well. It's your hormones. Yeah. It's everything. Why? Wow, it's the same reason you're crying out. We need tissues. <laughs> no, I'm okay. Tissues. I'm okay. <laughs> Um, yeah. But it is, and it's mad, and you put so much press pressure on yourself. Yeah. And it's so hard, isn't it? Because you do, you feel like you're, like you're failing. Mm. And I think sometimes, even if it's later on when you stop, there's always going to be someone that makes you just feel that little bit inadequate yeah. that you're not breastfeeding. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's mad, it's mad. So we were talking about this earlier, weren't we, that... Um, in boots and well anywhere it's law that you don't get um points like on your advantage card or whatever for buying formula milk yeah i we, i mean i've only found this out today and mm. i just think it's outrageous it's terrible yeah. so so basically you do, you don't get your points on your advantage card if you're buying formula milk milk um for under six months um and the the reason is is that the government don't want to encourage um formula feeding they want to encourage breastfeeding but I think this huge problem is is that some people don't want to breastfeed yeah, which, is, which fine. is fine you can't that, that can't stop you having a baby just no. because you don't want to breastfeed some people like you can't it, yeah. it just wasn't happening you were so poorly yeah and that's fine other people do it and that's fine and that's what I think needs to be talked about so much more is that whatever is the right way for you yeah it's not like you're feeding them blooming acid is no. it no i think it's also what's good what works best for your family you know mm. some women don't want to breastfeed because they want their husband to share the role of feeding 100%. the baby they don't want to feel you know you've gone through a whole pregnancy you've gone through a birth and you know, you get to a stage where you want support from someone else, someone else to take on some of the responsibility too. Or they've got a few children and they think, I just can't commit that time to to breastfeeding the baby. But to to, to penalise people actually mm. for buying formula, I just it's think wrong. it's disgusting. I do. I think what I'm going to do is start a petition. Yeah. Um, and get lots of people to sign it, and then I'm going to go to the government and tell them that they are wrong. <laughs> and I feel very strongly about yes. this. And would you have another? Yes. You would? Yes. You would. And would you try breastfeeding again? Uh, yeah, I will try again and see, you know, as I was told, it can work with the first child and not the second mm. or, you know, the other way around. So I would give it a go again, but if I would like to think I would have the sense not to pull that pressure on myself so, if it wasn't working I think again. When, when you're a new mum, when it's your first time, I think you put so much more pressure on than the second time. I hope so. Because <laughs> I think the second time you know, yeah. you kind of know what you're doing, whereas the first time it's learning, you just try and do everything by the book. Yeah. And so every leaflet says you should breastfeed. So and you're, you're trying like, to prove that you can do everything. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 I can, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. And I can crack on as normal. And I won't be tired. And I'll I'm, be fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, and I'll have my makeup on and yeah. we'll be out in the I park. Know, and, I know. Yeah. Then there was like one week where I tried to like have a shower, put my makeup on, do my hair. And I was like, right, I can do this. This is it now. This is my routine. And then the next week I was like, hair in a bun, no yeah. makeup. And I was in my leggings. <laughs> As a mummy, yeah. do you have any words of advice or any tips for other new mummies out there? A uh, tip is to wear patterns. Patterns. Patterns yes. on you and the baby. Yes. It Camouflage covers, uh, covers everything. It does, it does. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, Bump. If you want to watch the playlist, then click here. And if you want to watch last week's episode, then click here.